Hello, scholars. My name is Joseph Ejiko RG. And I'm going to keep you company today. Uh, the topic of our lecture tonight is financial options. Yeah. So let me begin by sharing my screen with you. And then we'll take off the day. I want to make sure that you are seeing the screen. Yeah, this is it. Okay, good. Now, when it comes to valuing assets, there are two approaches we use in finance. The first approach is the discounted cash flow approach. And the second one is the option pricing approach. So in this lecture, and the one that will come after that, um, We'll be focused on options, financial options. So um, let me start by introducing, taking a brief look at derivatives. Now, what is a derivative? A derivative, uh, when we say derivative, we are referring to those securities that they are, whose price are dependent upon or whose are uh, an underlying assets. But let me put it in a different way. A derivative, the value of the, the price of a derivative is derived from one or more underlying assets. The underlying asset can be a stock, or it can be a currency, you know. So, there are many ways, there are many examples of derivatives. But usually they are classified into futures contracts, forward contracts, options, and swaps. Which sometimes sometime we call them, we call the swaps, the credit default swaps. So um, investors use derivatives to hedge when buying certain assets. I'm going to explain that in a few minutes. Uh, and what is hedging anyway? Hedging is just a way to protect uh, against a loss in value of an, an investment. So they use the, uh, many investors, especially the put option, can be used to as a hedge uh, against uh, uh, financial asset like stock. So now, um, I'll give you an example of this. So suppose uh, somebody uh, have a stock and he's concerned that they, based on what he's seeing on the market, that the price of the stock will fall. Now, in that case, that person might buy an option, uh, is, is, is especially what one we call a put option, whose value will increase if the stock price you know, falls. So let's say that you have a stock of Bank of America and you think that it will fall in value next week or next two weeks or in a month's time, you can buy a put option. Uh, a put option, value goes up when the stock falls. So that even when their stock falls, that uh, when the Bank of America's stock that you own loses value, you will still, your options, your put option will increase in value. So you don't lose anything. In other words, um, an option can be used as a kind of insurance against loss, you know, for stockholders. But that, that is for put a put option. Uh, most option contracts we have are for call option. Call option is when the prices of the assets rises, the value of the option increases. Now we're we'll looking at um, financial options. So what is an option anyway? An option is a contract that gives owner the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell an underlying asset at a predetermined price within a specified period of time. So uh, the underlying asset, well, when we say underlying assets, uh, we, 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 we mean an asset or a financial instrument like a stock, futures, commodities, currency, 
or an index, market index like S&P 500. So an underlying asset is a financial instrument on which the price of a derivative, like an auction, like an auction is based on. So we call it an underlying asset. And the price that uh, at which the a specific derivative, like an option, is bought or sold. We call it uh, a strike price or exercise price. We use a, a, a letter X to represent that. So, um, and when you buy an option or you sell an option, we say that you are exercising the option. Okay. So, the, and that strike price is the price at which that option is bought or sold or is being exercised. Okay, so uh, in this lecture, we focus on just give you a general background of what op option is and uh, how you can make money from it. Then in the subsequent lectures, we are can now, now show you how to value options. Okay, now types of options. We will have uh, two main types of options, the call option and the put option. Now, a call option gives the holder the right, but not the obligation, to buy a certain number of shares of stocks or amount of financial or real assets at a particular price until the expiration date, T. That's a use T for time, which is the expiration date. So it gives you the right, but not the obligation, to buy a certain number of shares of stock or amount of the financial real asset at a particular price on, up until the expiration date. Now, the right, but not the obligation, you need to understand what that means. It means that you can decide not to buy the stock if the option is, if the price is not moving in your own way. Yeah? So that way you lose only the amount you pay for the contract. Now, put option give the holder the right, but not the obligation, to sell a certain number of shares of stock at a particular price up until the expiration date. So again, like I mentioned in a, in a few uh, in a few minutes ago, the agreed upon price at which the stock will be bought or sold is called the strike price or the exercise price. Now, now um, people have been asking me about a type of option that is called binary options. So I'm going to explain the, the difference between the binary option and the conventional option. The one we are discussing in this class will be the conventional options, call option, put option, not the binary option. But I want to clear this conf confusion. Uh, why conventional option is different from binary options. Now, so a binary option is a financial instrument that turns every trade into a simple yes or no question. So, uh, and they are different from the conventional option in three main ways. Uh, the first one is that unlike the uh, other types, the conventional option, a binary option does not give you, uh, give the holder the right to purchase or to sell the underlying assets. See? So uh, in conventional option, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, you, you, the trader, may decide not to buy or sell the stock if it doesn't trade in your favor. So you will lose only the amount, that is the premium you paid to enter the option contract. So that means this is that you paid, uh, you, you, you paid, uh, you wanted to invest uh, thousand dollars or maybe five thousand dollars and you paid only five hundred dollars for the contract so if the stock in question is not moving in your way let me see maybe it's it is trading below the price that you expected to to it to be to be uh, you know you expect the price to be higher but it's trading lower you may decide to, to not to buy the option the contract you know to exercise the option that means to buy the stock and that means you lose only the five hundred dollars you invested. Your five thousand dollars is still with you. You didn't lose that, but that is not the case 
with binary option. With binary option, we buy the contracts. Even if the stock is not moving away, it will still be exercised at the expiration date. That means you will lose all the five thousand dollars. <laughs> so, in other words, the shares will be bought or sold when the option expires, and you lose the entire money that you you know you, you invested. Unlike the conventional option. Second, the second uh, difference is this: there are only two possible outcomes at expiration for binary option. You either make a predefined profit or you lose hundred percent of the investments. See, uh, so uh, that is the second um, uh, difference. So th th this makes it uh, binary, binary option to be very risky. Okay. Um. Second, the third uh, difference is this: binary option. The time, the expiration time is so short. Most of the binary options, the expiration, they expire within five days or less. So, uh, this is not enough time for a stock price. Or to grow above the strike price so that you can make profit. So um, so five days is so small. So the stock might not uh, the price of the asset might not go up above the strike price within five days. So that means um, uh, if if you have up to one month, maybe you you have a chance of the price of the stock going above the strike price, but um, five days is not enough. So, and if the uh, option is a call option, I'm mean, sorry, a put option that you want that to make money when the price goes down, five days would, will not be enough for the stock to fall below the strike price either. Because uh, that means um, uh, it, 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 with, re with regular option, sometimes you have one to three months before the option expires. So that's enough time for the stock to either go up above the strike price and you make money, or for put option, go below the strike price and you make money. That is not the case with the binary option. option. So the five days is not, after five days it expires and the new contract is out. So because of this, um, the um, binary option is so very risky. As a matter of fact, as much as up to 90% of people that invest in binary options lose their money, 90%. They are exotic, they are harmful, and they are high risk financial products resulting in millions of dollars of losses for retail investors. So that's the difference between these two. So because of that, we're not going to go into binary options. Look at the conventional options. Uh, but before I do that, there's one other difference. Most binary options are not, um, you know, traded. Um, they're not. Um, um, how, do you, how, how do you put it? Regulated. They're not regulated. Except one of them. I, I know only one that is regulated. The Nadex binary options regulated. But still, it is as risky as any other regular binary options. But majority of them in Europe and the United States are not regulated. So there's a lot of uh, opaqueness, lack of transparency in what they do behind the curtain. So as a result, in some countries, they are banned, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Anyway, let's turn our attention to the main options. Uh, remember, I explained that options, a call option gives you the, whole, the right, but not the obligation to buy certain number of shares of stocks or amount of financial asset at a particular price until the expiration date. A put option gives you the holder the right, but not the obligation to sell a certain number of stocks at a particular price up until the expiration uh, date. And the price that you, you are, the agreed upon price at which the stock will be bought or sold is called a strike price. So almost, um, every uh, publicly traded stock, almost all companies that trade uh, in the stock market have options um, because companies some um, people trade on on the, uh, on options um, every day. 
An option is something that you can trade. You can buy and sell a stock uh, without even owning the stock. So um, let me yeah, let me use a, uh, an example, real life example to show you the available call option and put option. Uh, I'll use a one company, Walmart, for example. So let me take you to finance, uh, Yahoo Finance. And I say finance, yahoo.com. So I'm going to pull out Walmart. WMT is the trading symbol. WMT is the trading symbol for Walmart. WMT, Walmart Incorporated. So you can see, uh, let me make sure you're seeing this. All right. See where you have this link. See options. When you click on that, it will show you the options. Walmart options. Click on that. <clears throat> and see the different options they have. And see the list of options. See the options. This is the call option for March 17th. See this, this is a call option. This is the, the strike price. Okay. Uh, this is a contract name. Strike price. Okay. Let's see. When when is the expires? Last date of trade. They have it here. Let, let us click on this and see every information we have on this option. Give us okay. See, this is the uh strike price is five dollars and it expires on the 17th. Okay, this one expires. Uh it, I mean, it's almost close. It's very close to the expiry date. Yeah. All right. Let's look at another one. Um, uh, like this one here. These are the ones that I think they have. What they have here is one that to be expiring in March. Um, look at this one here. Um, in this case, the strike price is eighty-five dollars, and it also expires in March seventeenth. Okay, this is the one that expires yeah, within this um, um a week. Okay. Uh, so we can now um you have seen the available option for Walmart. Let us now go back to our presentation. There are some basic terms we need to know about options. Okay, so those terms include long. Long is, is a term we use to describe the buyer of the option. Short or writer is refers to the seller of the option. Now, remember, option is a contract. The contract. So the amount you pay. For that contract is called a premium. So that's the price of the option itself at the time T is called a premium. So, and then there are more terms we need to know. Expiry date means each option has an expiration date T after which the option may be exercised. When I say exercise, it means to be either sold or bought. And now, another one is other terms we need to look at are American option and European option. Well, an American option that gives the holder the right to exercise an option on or before the expiry date. That means when you buy an American option, you don't have to wait for the option to expire before you exercise it. You can, if the option is expiring on the 17th, for example, but the value of the assets went very up very high today, that means you can exercise it today. Can sell it today and make your money. An independent option gives the holder the right to exercise the option only on the expiration date. So that means if if the expiration date is on the seventeenth, that means you have you exercise it only on that date. So even if the price of the stock moves in your favor today, and you can you can if you want to exercise it today and get make profit immediately, you can do that because this is an European option. You have to wait. See the expiration date, and the, by the time you get to the expiration date, the stock might have moved against your uh, direction. That means 
will, will not be moving in your favor. So because of that, um, American option is more popular than European option because um, of this uh, provision. Now, remember, they don't have, they don't, there's, there's no option. These names are just, uh, it just doesn't mean that there's an option that, uh, that, that are only American option and there are one that are only European options. No, these are just names for the transaction, the kind of transaction they are, you know. Then, another thing is in the money. An option is said to be in the money when the current stock price uh, is greater than the strike price. We mean that we as a side option, uh, you will make a profit. So now let's look at this example here. It says, suppose you bought this call option, call, the strike price is $1,210 and it expires 30 days from today. Now, if this stock rises to $130 per share, then you can say that the option is in the money. Why? Because if you exercise it, it means that you, 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 you can buy the stock at 110 because it gives you the right. You have the right to sell it at any price you want. So you have the right to buy it at 110. And since you sign the contract, the seller can only sell that stock to you at 110, no matter what the market is doing. So you buy it at 110, and the price jumped to 130. The seller cannot sell it to you at 130 because he had a contract with you. Even if the stock went to as high as 150, you have a contract. So you can buy the stock and sell it at 130 or 150 and make a gain. So as soon as the gain, it went to 130, like at one and a half year, that means you can sell it and make a gain at $20. In other words, pulling the call option will allow you to purchase the stock at 110 strike price any time within the 30 days period and then sell it and make money. So that kind of option, we say that it, it is in the money because the stock price P is greater than the strike price X. So that means for a call option that is in the money, the price P is better than the strike price. So now out of money option is, is different. In that case, um, the current stock price is less than the strike price. We mean that when you exercise the option, you lose money. I'll give you an example. If the um, price of um, Yahoo stock is $37.50, for example, then all the call option with strike price of $38 are, are, or below are out of money. And, and below are out of money. Why? Because um, you don't make money when you when you exercise it. If you assume that you buy the stock at that eight dollars, okay, at that seven, that eight, it is at eight dollars. Um, but then um, you are uh, and the current market price is at seven dollar fifty cents. Then you 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 will make money uh, because after paying for the premium, and uh, you make you and then exercise the option, you lose money. So <clears throat> now um that we say that is they are out of money option. And that uh concept we need to understand uh, are the money options. In this case, an option strike price is equal to the price of the security. Again, um you um so that means that if you exercise the option, you have no you don't, you didn't make money, you didn't lose money. So it's a zero, got it. So we we say that the option is at the money. So uh, of course, as an, as an investor, you, you prefer an option that is in the money. Okay. Now the exercise value is the value of an in the money option if it was exercised today. That means if you exercise before the um expiration date. So for a call option, this is different between the current asset price and the strike price. Now for a put option, it is the difference between the strike price and the current asset price. Let's look at a few examples for this one. It says, bright memory stock is currently trading at $50 per share. A call option on the stock 
with the strike price currently sells for $21. What is the exercise value of the call option? And what is the time value? So uh, I always encourage my students to use Excel when doing a mask like this. So I'm going to put this in Excel. So let me write down this numbers. Uh, stock, stock price is $50 per share. And the strike price is $35 per share. And then the um the premium uh, the premium which is there is twenty one dollars twenty one dollars so let's go and put them in Sarah so that we have um okay current price is fifty dollars a share okay I'm gonna make it dollars dollar sign and the uh, strike price is Five dollars per share. Okay. All right. Then exercise value. So in that case, the question wanted us to find the. It's a find what is the exercise value of the call option. So the exercise value will now becomes uh the current price and the strike price. Again, before you can do any calculation in Excel, make sure you put a equal sign first to make the cell to be in a ready mode. So you click on this, then put minus sign, and minus the stripe price. And press the enter key to get your, so $15 from the exercise value. Then the cost of for the option premium is $21 according to the equation. Okay. So that's the, um, the second question they asked us was to find the time value. That is the cost of the premium minus the exercise value. It was the time value. Okay. So the premium minus the exercise value, the time value. The premium minus exercise value. Click on that then. was the time value. So we have our two answers here. Um, pace and the exercise by exercise value. Okay, so the time value and the side value answers, we have them here. So that is just beginning, and uh, we'll do more examples. In the next example, I'll show you how you can make money by buying call options, okay, and put options as well, okay? So now, taking us to the back to the presentation, you have option trading. So um, options are usually traded at exchanges such as Chicago Board of Exchange, Chicago Board, of, Board Option Exchange, Boston Option Exchange, and then we have a lot of um, over-the-count uh, discount traders. Now, I would say discount um, uh, brokerages uh, on, that are online. So a good example are TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, uh, fidelity and so on and so forth. Excuse me. Yeah, a few things we need to know about option two. First one that the leverage involved in options make it possible for uh, speculators with a few dollars to make a fortune overnight. In other words, you can make a fortune option overnight you can also lose a fortune overnight with option. So um, another one is this corporations whose stocks are the options are written have nothing to do with it with the option market. So that means uh, a company cannot raise money in the option market. Uh, so uh, and they don't have uh, any direct transaction needs anywhere at all. Not only that, people who hold options cannot receive, they cannot vote for corporate directors and they can't receive dividends. Remember, option, you trade on stocks that you don't own. It is only when the stock is start moving in a direction that you start, you want to exercise the option. If you're not moving in a direction, you don't have to exercise. That is the only time you buy it and sell it. So because of that, you don't own the stock. 
which means that you can't vote for the corporate directors or receive dividends. Now, um, the values of our options depend on five variables. Uh, first one is the value, value of the current price of the underlying stock, P. So that price, that current price of the underlying stock is represented by the letter P. The exercise price or the strike price, which is represented by the letter X, the appropriate risk-free rate, which is represented by the letter small r, the time until expiration, which is uh, also represented with the letter T, then the standard deviation or in the price of underlying stock which we use uh, either small s or delta symbol to represent. We'll come to this eventually when we start valuing uh, options, okay? But then we can use this simple analogy to explain um, options, okay? Look at this question. It says, suppose John believes GCC stock will rise next month but he doesn't own shares, GCC shares. The closing price for GCC stock is $53.50. Yeah. Now, Brittany has 100 shares of GCC stock. And she believes, I mean, Brittany believes uh, that they will fall below $53.50. Okay. So um, she agreed to an option contract to sell uh, her shares to John at a strike price of $50 in a month. So she believed that it would fall below that amount, below uh, $52.50. That means it can fall to $40. So she agreed to go into contract to sell her shares to John at a strike price of $50 per share. The price quoted in the option contract that they she written a sign with John, which is that price, we call it the premium that John will pay her to enter the contract, is $5.50. If GCC shares rose to $5 in a month and John bought this as the bought and exercised the option, what would be his profit? If GCC share falls to $48 in a month, what would be John's profit? To answer this question, I uh, want to enter these values um, <clears throat> in Excel. So, <clears throat> so the, the, the closing price, that's current price P, um, is um, we have $52.50 per share. And then uh, the strike price X is uh fifty dollars and then the option uh premium uh, is premium is five dollar fifty cents so let us put all this into the excel okay so you can see how this works so the premium that he paid was five dollar fifty cents Okay, number of shares that Brittany agreed to sell to him. Remember, Brittany has how many shares? Um, she have how many shares of GC stock? A uh, hundred shares, or is it? See, hundred shares. So that will give us hundreds. Number of shares. Okay. So the total amount that uh, John would pay him would be. 100 times $5.50 cents equals 100 times $5.50 cents, $550. Good. Now, the strike price is $50. That's the price that Britain wants to sell the share for him to him. So that the uh, total price uh, for, for the stock, 100 shares, it equals $50 times $100, I'm sorry, times 100 shares, $5,000, that's how much John pays uh, Brittany. He's supposed to pay, you know, 
her. So that now after um according to the question, according to the question, it says if the GCC stock she arose to $65 in a month and John bought it. Uh, what is his profit? Okay. So let's see. So it, it rose to how much again? $65. So what is his profit? I think that is right. Uh, profit for John. So that means $65. So that's... Um, So John bought it and, and sell it in, and immediately exercised it. So profit will now become uh amount to receive when he bought the share, he bought the shares at $50 per share and then immediately exercised it at $65 per share. So that amount he received from the sale will now become $65 times um 100 shares, which is six thousand five hundred dollars So his his profit, which is what we are looking for, will now become the formula for it is this. Um, the amount he received from exercising the option, minus the amount he paid for the shares, the amount of the premium he paid for the, for the contract, which would be um, amount he received from the seller, minus the premium he, um, the uh, amount he paid for the uh, stock, okay, minus the premium. He paid, which is five fifty. That gave us nine hundred and fifty dollars. So that answered part A. So he make nine hundred and fifty dollars. Um, if he, you know, uh, bought the shares and exercised it. Now let me show you how you make big money from option. Suppose, um, this is um, that um, John bought so many shares of. This type I means so many options. So instead of 100, he bought 1,000. So he's making $9,500 within a month by exercising the option. And remember, uh, he paid, uh, for, to make that 9,000, he paid a premium of option premium of uh, 5,500. So to make so then if the shares move in his direction, and that means uh he buy it for fifty thousand and exercise it for sixty five um sixty five thousand. So then can that make nine thousand five hundred? Okay. Yeah. So that is um options. For, this is for call option. Now let's look at the is an opposite scenario. Suppose the price of GCA stock fall to forty-eight dollar per share in a month. What would be John profit? In that case, uh, we calculate the same thing, but this time around, put the shares to forty-eight dollars instead of five dollars. That is one good thing about Excel. You can just copy the work you did and then change a few numbers until you give you the answer. So in that case, I let me just copy the whole of this, paste it here. So, okay. So, remember, because he's making profit on this one, we said that the option is in the money. So, let's look at this scenario whereby the price of the stock fell to uh, $48, dollars, I believe. It fell to $48 instead of $65, if, instead of going up to $65. So, in that case, how much will he make? Well, actually, he'll be losing because if the price of the stock for so I just all you have to do is to change this $65 to $48. And then as you click on here, it will Excel will recalculate it because the formula is already there. See, in that case he loses $750. Now, because he's going to lose money, remember option give you the right, but not the obligation to exercise it. So in this case, since he's going to lose money. Why will he exercise it and lose seven hundred and fifty dollars? Instead, it will just he will just allow the option to expire and lose only five hundred and fifty dollars. Whereas, if you have exercised it, he will lose seven fifty dollars plus the five hundred and fifty dollars he had. He already paid. That's a lot to lose. 
So that means he to cut down his losses, he just allowed the option to expire and lose only the premium to pay for it. So that is uh, how often work uh, scholars and um, and I have this thing also shown in my presentation here. Okay. So in in the last lecture on this class, I'll be looking at how to value call option before uh, the expire, you know. And I, I hope you enjoy the lecture. Uh, thank you for listening. And I will see you in my next class. Bye-bye.